Welcome to the Shabby Fabrics at Home Studio. For those of you that are new here, my name is Chase, and I'm so happy you're joining us to create something together today. Today our project is not only fun and simple, but it's actually a very useful product to have in your home, and it's made with supplies that most of you might even have already. So today we are making these embroidery hoops with pockets here, and there's a few different variations that are very easy to make, but they just look lovely and they're very useful as well. So like this one here, it has the pocket. You can put any of your supplies in here. Maybe you hang this in your craft room, your sewing notions. Um, I like kind of the variation of all three when you're hanging them. So this one here, it has the jute on it. You can hang up your photos of a loved one, maybe a note from a friend, any of your reminders. This one would be perfect for that. Or also we have one here that has the sideways pocket um, diagonally here. This one would be great for maybe any mail that you might have, any longer envelopes, and they really just look great coordinated all together. I also wanted to show you different variations of the color that you could do with this. So this one, we painted this beautiful gold. You really can get super creative with these um, and make it your own and anything that works well for you in your home. I would hang these all together maybe in my office, um, by my front door to hang any reminders that I might need. They're really just perfect and very customizable. These ones here are made with the beautiful Nantucket collection that we have for Moda Fabrics. I think it just looks stunning together, um, but you can really use any fabric that you have on hand. Um, another really fun variation of this project is this Christmas one that we've created. You know Christmas in July. I love, love, love the look of this fabric. This is the Christmas stitch fabric. Um, and this one is actually coming soon. So if you aren't familiar with our website, you can go on and you can sign up, enter your email address and get notifications on when this one is available. It's really pretty. I love the vintage appearance that it has. And so this one will go quickly. Make sure you sign up for the email, get your name on the list. It really is just lovely. And look, you can put your little Christmas cards in here. You can make a variation with the jute inside the cards in. Really the possibilities are endless. So. Let's get started in making one of these. Today I'm gonna show you how we're gonna start with this simple one here with just the one pocket. Um, and what we're going to do first is we will you know, measure our fabric out. I'm not gonna give you exact measurements because some of you might have a larger hoop than I do. Um, this is a 12 inch embroidery hoop. If you have a little bit of a smaller one, that's fine. Maybe you have a larger one. Like I said, you can really make it your own to fill the right space. So this one is 12 inch here and we're gonna select our fabric. If you are not familiar with um, fabric sizing, a great size of fabric to use for this project and really all craft projects would be a fat quarter set. Um, if you're newer to sewing like I was when I first started, when I joined the Shabby team, um, I wasn't quite familiar with what a fat quarter size was. And so instead of a quarter of a yard cut being um, skinnier with the nine inches by with the fabric, this is going to allow you to get a little bit of a wider size. So this is a fat quarter and this is going to be double the width and half the length. And a fat quarter is 18 by 21. So it gives you more width, more space to work with, especially for these embroidery hoops. And a really cool thing that is common as well is they come in coordinating bundles. So if you're someone who really can't decide what colors they'd like to go together, they're doing all the work for you. This is a lovely um, fat quarter bundle here that this is the Secret Stash by Andover Fabrics. It's just beautiful and coordinating. It really does it for you. This again is the Christmas stitch. They're just truly beautiful and it goes together so nicely. So let's get started. What you're going to do first is you're going to take one sheet of fabric here and you're going to begin to measure it out. So you're going to take your fabric and you're gonna want to measure enough to have a one inch border around your hoop, about a one to two inch border. And you wanna make sure that's a little bit longer than shorter because you can cut it at the end. And once you get that size, you're then going to make a second um, piece of fabric the same size as that, but you're gonna fold it in half. This is what's gonna make our pocket. So again, same size, we just then took that piece of fabric and we folded it in half. And we can just set that aside for now. Then what we're going to do is we're going to unscrew our embroidery hoop here. So the little clasp at the top, we're just going to loosen it. And what this is going to do is it's going to loosen it and it's going to create two hoops here. So then we're going to take one of them and lay it down and take that one piece of fabric with the one inch border and lay it over our hoop like so. 
After that, you're going to take your piece of fabric that you folded in half and you're going to layer it directly over it around the size that you would like your pocket to go up to. So if you'd like to put some larger supplies in here, of course, you're going to want to move your pocket up a little bit higher. If you'd like it a little bit less, you just kind of see where you want to go. I'm going to put this around the middle. And then after that, what we're going to do is we're going to take the hoop with the clasp and we're going to put it over the first hoop. And this one might actually need to be loosened a tiny bit. It's a little bit of trial and error, making sure that it's on there nice and snug to the first hoop while still tightening. So then now that we have it nice and snug, we'll tighten this like so. And we want to make sure that when we're tightening it, it's staying nice and close to that first hoop that we have at the bottom here. We don't want it kind of moving it up when we're tightening it. And we're going to get that nice and tight. Once it's tight enough and it feels nice and snug, what we'll do now is we're going to take the fabric here and we're going to pull the sides to make sure that it is nice and straight because we don't want any wrinkles or creases in here. If when you're starting and you had some wrinkles or creases in your fabric to begin with, I would recommend ironing it at first. So that way you just have a nice flat surface. And all that I'm doing is just pulling the fabric to make it nice and taut in the middle here. And we're just going to go all the way around. If you feel like it's a little bit off center, you can just take it and pull to whatever direction you'd like to to make it just how you would like it. Once you feel like it's a good length and good spacing, we're then going to flip it over and we're going to cut our excess fabric off of here. So I'm going to use these Karen K. Buckley scissors. You guys know I love these ones. They make just a nice, precise cut every time. Very comfortable and easy to use. And we're just cutting about, again, a one inch border around the hoop here, all the way around with both layers of fabric, just getting that excess fabric away. So that way we can create our backside of our hoop here that is nice and tucked in. So that way it can easily hang up against the wall and it isn't creating any space against the wall at all. So we're just going around and cutting here, getting it nice and close, get through. It's important to have a good pair of um, scissors too to get through both layers of fabric here. You don't need to worry about it being super precise because we're going to glue it down, but just as even as possible all the way around, just like that. So we can move that away. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our hot glue gun. And if you don't have this fine tip hot glue gun yet, I highly, highly recommend it. The fine tip on here makes it so easy to just get a nice crisp line that's nice and thin. You don't have a big thick line of hot glue. We also have the glue sticks available as well if you need a glue stick refill. And what we're going to do is we're going to then just take it along our border here. And then we're going to fold our fabric down. With the pocket one, you might have to, you know, do two layers of it here again over the top so it sticks well. Do it in the middle here. So you kind of have to play around with those two layers. And also really a helpful um, piece of this project is this parchment paper that I have down. This is an extra large piece of parchment paper. So it's covering my entire workspace. It's there to clean up any mess that may have been created while making this hoop. Sometimes the hot glue kind of spews out to the side. This makes it so it just is perfectly in a little, um, you know, it has a little dot of glue there. And it, once it dries, you can just easily pick it off no messes. It's just nice and easy. So we're just gluing down each layer. Make sure it's nice and tight and hidden. Just going all the way around. Takes a little bit longer to get that second piece where the pocket is, but now we're good to go with just this one layer down at the bottom. Just all the way around to hide anything here and it if you need to clean it up you can tuck it in you can tighten as you go along if you feel like your fabric still needs to be tightened it is still able to be um, kind of moved around at this point you can you know turn it back and forth to make sure that everything is staying in place as you're doing this and we're just going to continue to glue 
like I said, you can do this with any size of embroidery hoop. Maybe you have a six inch embroidery hoop that you wanna just keep some of your small notes in there. That works just as well. Um, same process with the fabric. You know, lots of different ways you can get creative with this. And as we're going just all the way around, we'll soon be able to see the finished product around the front. Just tucking it all in, getting any pieces down that we missed. One more here. And there we are. Look at how simple and easy that is. We have the pocket here. We have the two different designs that coordinate together. Like I said, get one of those um, fat quarter set bundles that make it just super coordinating and easy for you, a cohesive look that you won't even need to think about. Um, the second one that I will show you here is this one with the jute attached to it. So you're going to do the same process as we just did with layering the fabric in between the two hoops. And we're only going to do this with one piece of fabric with this one. We don't create a pocket here. So we have our one piece of fabric in our hoop. We glued the back side like we did previously. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some jute. You could also use ribbon if you have ribbon. It's just really your preference and what goes with the fabric. I like the jute paired with this fabric here. And what we're going to do is we're going to first look at how we want this to start. So with this one, I started on the left side. And what I did is I just went directly in a diagonal line downwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of place a dot of glue on the side of this border here, and I'm just going to stick one end of the jute string onto it and let it set for just a moment to dry. And I'm going to create the di diagonal line, and then I'm going to put another dot of glue on the other end and hold until it has set. And this is going to create one diagonal line here. And then what I'm going to do to avoid it creating a loop and being uneven, I want it to start directly at this angle here. I'm actually going to cut my string of jute and I'm gonna start new with a new string. So then I'm going to put a new piece of jute, glue it down here and place it directly over it so it matches up perfectly. I'm not having any excess string. And again, go down the opposite way a diagonal line and you're kind of just creating a I guess a Z shape with this jute string again the other side glue it hold until it's set if you'd like smaller spacing you can do them tighter together you can do them wider um, really just your preference of how you would like to hang maybe a memo note maybe a little note from someone maybe um, some photos to hang in your office that you know make you happy any of that. And then we're just going to keep going down the line here. So I would apply another dot of glue and keep zigzagging across this embroidery hoop. And there you have another variation of it. Um, our pocket one here that we did earlier, if you'd like the sideways pocket, you just position it a little bit differently. Um, again, diagonal like our jute lines here, but instead we're doing it with our pocket. This is perfect for any of your larger envelopes or any other items. They really are just great because they're so customizable and easy to make. Put them throughout your home, different rooms, maybe in your office if you like any of your memo boards above you, or in your craft room. This would be perfect for all your sewing notions and tools. Just really simple and easy. So thank you for joining me today to make this together. We will see you for the next video. But in the meantime, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and also follow along with our Instagram and Pinterest accounts at home with Shabby. And we will see you next time.